So just going on to doing a bit more of the extraction stuff now. You saw me and Chris bored a hole out the wall. I think that was in a previous clip. So need to wire it up now. For those of you that followed this on the old in the old workshop back in the day, you'll remember we drove this motor off a of VFD, which gave us the ability to vary the speed, which was really handy because we could just idle it down in between runs and then ramp it up in between. And I'd, obviously it's a three phase motor, so that's no problem. So what I'm gonna do is whip the VFD off the wall, which is still somewhere in the depths of my old workshop. Hopefully it's still good. I'm gonna put that in an enclosure, just do a slightly tidier job this time. Somewhere here on the wall, I haven't quite decided where yet, most likely down there. And then we'll run power to it and the control wires need to come back to the main control box so that we can well, a turn it start and stop the fan using the dyno controller but also so we can do the high and low speed uh, through the dyno controller and also automatically based on the roller speed all right so i've just been on a bit of a trip down to the old workshop managed to find the old vft still screwed to the wall where it was mounted back in the day so i'm going to stick this in this enclosure you can see we've got that pot sticking out the bottom of it that was what we set our idle speed for and then the two trigger wires which is on one of the inputs basically put that signal wire to ground and it will trigger between full speed 50 hertz and whatever this speed is set to which was fairly low just enough to carry away the exhaust while the car's idling so i'm going to get this mounted on that back plane and we'll get that enclosure mounted on the wall right afternoon i've hopefully knocked out most of the wiring haven't really filmed any of it because it's not particularly interesting and you just need to concentrate so I can't quite remember what the last clip I videoed was, but the control box now is basically finished, all wired up, everything's tested and working. Uh, the indicator lights on the front of the panel also wired up and now working. You can see the computer is actually fired up. I haven't done any configuration really yet at all other than just the inputs and outputs to test, to test all this stuff. So we've got the extractor on all mounted on the wall. I can't quite remember where we were. See, I've got that wire, put a little enclosure back here just to house the VFD. So, different one from the last, I think we've started doing this the other day. I recovered the old VFD from the old workshop, which has been sat down there, well, basically since the original dyno videos back in the day. Obviously, the damp got to it. I did have it working, it worked for a day, and the next day it died. So, I did actually already have a spare Chinese VFD here, which is the one I bought as spare for my drill press years ago. And I've never used so I thought I might as well use what I've got so we've put that back in there got that all configured now put that in a little box so at least this time it's sealed and hopefully out the damp the damp has definitely got to the old one you can see the PCB is not happy and it has in fairness it's been sat there down for over five years doing nothing so the only real side of the extraction left to do now is the pipe work but we'll worry about that I think once we get a car in here and sort of figure out the lengths and stuff that we need to be need to be working with so I got that all cabled back. We've got our air supply across the dining now as well. So we've got everything powered on here now. Uh, one quite nice addition with the, the newer sport devices hardware, the SP6, you've got like a little remote, which is super handy. So before all the inputs and stuff, you have them on the screen there and you'd have to physically mouse over them and click on them to use them, which is a bit of a pain. You can obviously do it on your mouse and keyboard, but from this point forward, it's, we can now basically activate all of the external outputs using these buttons on this wireless remote. We can start and stop the run on it, so we haven't got to have that piece of wire you used to see dangling in the window to start and stop the runs. And we can do a few, a few other functions all, all on this little wireless keypad. And I'll just show you what we've got working so far. Um, so we can lift up the air lifts with these ones, push it back down again. That the air's actually turned off, that's why it's not come up very much. Now we've got two buttons that activate the bed hydraulics. That's coming in now, and that's pushing out. That works quite nicely. I've also implemented a safety system on that. So you can click that across to the lock position and see the lock light come on, then the bed won't move. So the idea is once you've got the car wheelbase set, you flip that across to lock and there's then there's no way you can accidentally activate that when you've got a car strapped on the dyno because obviously the hydraulics are really powerful and they will just bend and break anything probably to if you accidentally were to lean on one of these buttons in the car so obviously when it's in the unlock position that then runs we've got the cooling fans for the retarders on that button there i generally just have them on once the dyno's been going for a while got our primary cooling fan for the car 
that used to just be plugged in and we used to just turn it on and off manually so it's quite nice now you can just turn that off in between runs without having to get out the car just got that wired in on the side there and then the extraction the exhaust extraction again is on one of these hotkeys so you can just turn it on with the second fan output and you can hear it's just ticking over a low speed you probably remember from the old dyno i had the same setup so it runs at low speed and then when it senses roller rpm it ramps up to full power and then when it stops it ramps back down and then we can just turn it off again on there idea of that as before is just every time the car comes to a halt it just brings that extraction noise right down because when that thing's flat out you pretty much can't hear yourself think never mind talk to anyone else in the room so that just automates that so you haven't got to worry about it also just see i have put a few lights and stuff on the front of the control panel just for ease so you've got the button at the top that basically turns the pc on and off so you haven't got to walk around the back and press the little button on the computer and you've got your lock and unlock for your hydraulic bed that we showed you a minute ago there is an indicator light there when i actually run the run the hydraulic pump just to let you know it's running obviously you've got the main power light so you can't leave it turned on and you've got retarder fan indication car cooling fan indication and the extractor indicator just so you can when you sat in the car at a quick glance you can see that everything's running because basically when you're running a car you should see all greens and a red to, to, to let you know that it's all locked off and safe to go so with all that working now we are getting really close to getting a car on here and testing some stuff out we still need to do load cell calibrations still need to do some configuration on the software because things are different now to how they were before I've got some tie down points in the floor, I've welded, I think we showed in the previous clip, some across the back of the frame there and on the side. Everything's working, I've got roller RPM coming in on the front and the back beds correctly in the software. Wiring is largely done. So the only real problems I've got to address before we can get any further is for some reason my rear load cell isn't working. I've got a feeling it's a bad load cell because I couldn't, I must admit when I mounted it I didn't quite remember where it had come from. But I had a second load cell kind of just in the box of dyno stuff and it was years ago it was put in there I don't seem to be getting any output from that one so I'm guessing it's bad either that or I've wired it up wrong so I need to confirm that first and the other slight fail is I can't actually remember what I would have been welding but I've clearly been welding or maybe even just grinding something nearby and you'll see it's melted. I must have been welding actually thinking about it for it to be that hot, but I've melted a couple holes in, in one of these airbags. So there's, it still goes up and down, but a lot slower because it's losing half of its air from there. So I'm gonna have to try and chop that off. And I think I might just have enough room to get away with it. Otherwise I'm gonna have to faff around taking the whole thing out again, which I really hope I don't have to do. Okay, so I've just sorted out this rear load cell problem. So I wasn't getting any reading from it at all. I was. Well, I was concerned that the load cell might have been a bad one because it was one that I put in a box and I couldn't really remember why it was in there. Uh, but no, it's all right. It's, it turns out it's fine. It's just weirdly wired. So the wiring, despite using the same four colours as all other load cells, for some reason the excitation positive and signal positive, so green and red, were the wrong way around. So I've just inverted them. Now that load cell's reading sweet. So just going to calibrate now obviously we've got a different dyno controller so the excitation voltage could be slightly different so the calibration values will need to be redone so and you'll probably remember the old calibration arm so i just made years ago i just made up this piece of metal that basically bolts on the retarder i know the exact distance between the center line of the retarder shaft and the center line of where the weight is hanging which is 929 mil it's 50 kilo weight so you can then enter that in software and then it uses that calculation to create like a scaling factor for the load cell. So what we'll do now is we'll calibrate this one, we'll calibrate the back one. I think they're both the same size load cell, so we should get a similar calibration scaling factor, but I might be wrong, that might be a smaller cell. And we'll have to wait and see. Right, well, I think at last we are at the point where the next step is getting a car up on this dyno and strapping it down. So the only thing left to do now really is the ramps and some pipe work for the exhaust extraction. Now, I'm gonna temporarily use my trailer ramps to get a test vehicle up on it. It's not that high off the ground, so I'm fairly sure we can get a car up on some shorter ramps just for testing purposes. So I wanna be able to use the same car 
independently on both beds when I'm when I'm testing this initially to make sure that everything is reading the same. Obviously, they should both pretty much make the same output. So I got an old, well, I bought a rear drive two liter petrol BM, which I'm just going to use for testing purposes. And we'll test the front one. That should obviously be fairly good because it was the one we were using before. Test the back one. Make sure they're both making the same sort of readings. Finalize where I want to put a few anchor points on the side here. I'll do that once the car's up. And then we should be in action. So for anyone that's followed from well the very start, obviously we originally started with this front diner down in my old workshop, however many years ago it was. We rebuilt that one. If you're new to the channel, you can actually go back and watch the whole series of doing this original dyno that was down in the old workshop. And basically from here back, I've made new, as you've seen in this video series, mainly so we can do four wheel drive. But as well as being able to do four wheel drive vehicles, it does also now mean that when we're doing rear drive vehicles or front drive vehicles, the, the actual car itself is sitting in the same place. So all the control gear, the screens, everything, the strapping points, they all stay in one place and you haven't got a car hanging off the front in the way. So that is also an added benefit of having the two dyno set up. So I'm pretty pleased with how it's come out. So I guess the next clip will be loading the car up on for the first time with some probably fairly sketchy ramps. Well, I'll see you then.